Hey guys, it's Bronson here. If you're wondering how to grow your financial IQ, you are not alone. This is a question that I've asked for years of how do I learn more about becoming wealthy? Because wealth is not something just that you have, it's something that you are, you become it, you think like a wealthy person, you view things from a way that a wealthy person will look at things. And if you continue to grow in this area, you actually become wealthy. And I've used these strategies basically to increase my net worth by over 10 times over the last four years. And I wanna share it with you. I'm gonna go over it in three easy steps. I'm gonna bring the fire in this one. If you can smash that like video, you'll bring the fire on your end, looking forward to it. So we're gonna jump into it. All right, so this is step number one. It all starts with words. So people wanna know is how do I do this? How do I go about making money? How do I go about making money? Just people wanna say, hey, just show me the money, man. Show me how this works, right? And we know that quote from Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Uh, but really, you know, when we talk about the words that are used, uh, there's also another quote that talks about, you know, do you really understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Because when we're around people that are not, uh, wealthy, they'll use certain terms. And if we're on people that are wealthy, they'll use other terms. In fact, Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he said, really, that's the primary difference. If you get around people that are wealthy, they're using different terms. They're using terms such as internal rate of return, uh, cash on cash return, uh, annuity, cash flow, passive income, tax implications, uh, financial planning. These are things that wealthy people use. And if you're not around wealthy people, or if you're not somebody who's wealthy, you're not gonna be really using these terms to be around these things. Industries also have certain terms that they will use inside of those industries. So the words that we're using actually are really, really important. And not just the words that we're using, but the, the words that we're learning. So uh, we all have a default where we, we, you know, I didn't come from money, maybe you didn't either. And, you know, it's easy to think from a place of scarcity and lack that I'll never get there, I'll never have money, I'll never be there. And so it is really important that you change your mindset when it comes to money. I actually put together a video here about affirmations when it comes to wealth. I highly recommend you change, you check that out because you can actually change the way that you uh, view money, the way you talk about money, the way you feel about it. And again, it allows you to really operate from a more abundant wealth perspective than from a scarcity perspective, which no one wants. So uh, check out those affirmations. Uh, and really when you're around people that are wealthy, uh, it's really important that you become a learner when you're reading information, when you're looking stuff up, that you see a word, you hear a word, you look it up, you ask a question about it, you try to learn as much as you can. Because if you, you wanna earn more, you gotta learn more. And this is really the first thing, that's a catchphrase that we say, but you know, if you're willing to learn, you're willing to put in the work, What's going to happen is you're gonna be able to speak these terms. Now, there are certain terms from certain industry, there are industry terms that are used. So for example, in real estate, where I'm at, uh, working in multifamily real estate, if I use a term I call a, a broker, and I say, hey, I'm looking to buy a building, and I'm looking to pay about 120,000 you know, per door or whatever, but there's a certain term that's used, instead of just buying you know, per unit, use the term it's trading at, 120,000 a door. If you use it, if you use some terms that are actually uh, insider industry terms, then it makes you appear as an expert and an insider rather than somebody who's a newbie and kicking the tires. And so this happens to a lot of people when they get involved, whether passively or actively in different types of investments. If you don't speak the right language or lingo, people don't really perceive you as being somebody who really knows what you're talking about. So it is very, very important that you learn new words for that specific industry, that you get around people and you really pay attention to learn. So that's the first step. We're gonna talk about step number two here in a second. All right, step number dose. If you wanna become wealthy, you have to get around wealthy people. If you wanna increase your financial IQ, you have to learn from people that have a high financial IQ. So how do you do that? Well, one way you do it is you go to networking events. I go to at least 10 conferences a year. I travel for these. They're great. I obviously mine are mostly in real estate. I go to other sorts of wealth conferences, things like that. They're online. There are different places you can find out about them through podcasts, through just, you know, networking. You can find out about it. There are local ones that uh, are, you know, real estate meetups, other types of meetups. Um, I lead a meetup in the Los Angeles area. So I've got, you know, a bunch of events I'm doing where I get around a lot of people that are more wealthy than I am, where I'm constantly being introduced to new ideas, to new ways of investing, to new terms, and it's really, really valuable. So that's one of the ways that you learn. Second thing is you can think about, even if you don't come from 
money, you can think about your own circle of friends and family. And maybe you have a distant relative who's done very well financially or did well in real estate, or you know somebody, or it's a neighbor or a friend, or your mom knows somebody. And just being able to go get coffee and connect with somebody who is very successful can be really, really valuable. And this is my story. I had a relative I just hadn't seen in years, reached out, found out he was a real estate person. We had a connection. We were able to get together. And I basically just asked a bunch of questions, uh, not annoyingly questions, but just really trying to understand, you know, what are the things that I should be doing? What are the things that you've done? And it really helped my financial education to grow. It also built in a mentor for me. So that's a great way to grow uh, your financial IQ is to be, be able to get a mentor to help you along this path. So uh, a, a big part of this as well is really asking great questions. Um, it's been said the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your questions. So some great questions to ask a wealthy person are, uh, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges you face now in your business or in your investing? Uh, what, are, what, what advice would you give to someone who's in my situation? Uh, and also, you know, what, what mistake, what, what's a mistake you made that you wouldn't do again or you'd change? So again, those are things you're asking, very intentional, direct questions. It gives them a chance to be able to mentor and share their experience, to give you advice, and you're not being you know, too intense, but you're asking them basically, hey, uh, you know, tell me, what's, what's your wisdom? What have you learned from this? What are some things? And it's very specific. So those are some great questions. Uh, if you want to go back and replay that, those are some nuggets there. So those are some ones you want to ask people uh, when you see them. The last thing, a bonus that I will say is, uh, you know, really when you're around wealthy people, if you can find a way to bring value, it is going to absolutely change your life. Now, what I mean by that is there's a quote by Jim Rohn, and it says, make yourself valuable to valuable people. Now, what does that mean? That's basically saying that if you can find people that are doing big things, maybe they're very, very wealthy or they have a business, and they're dealing with all kinds of problems in their business, they're investing in their life, if you can find a way to solve a problem for them, you're going to make yourself very valuable to them, and you're going to solve valuable problems. Now, in that scenario, people typically get paid very well to solve problems. And the more valuable the problem, the bigger the problem, the better you get paid. So in this way too, that's kind of a bonus that if you wanna increase your financial IQ and fast track it, go to somebody who's very successful and say, hey, what's the biggest challenge in your business and then, or in your investing or in your process, whatever you're doing, and try to find a way to help solve that. And that will dramatically, that will actually could potentially have you invited to be on the team to help solve problems and basically increase not only your financial IQ, but your wealth as well. We're gonna jump on here to step number three. All right, so this is step number three. It's called consuming great content. So if you wanna increase your financial IQ, you wanna increase your wealth, you have to have great content that you're consuming. You have to have great books you're reading. You gotta be around with podcasts and videos and information and magazines. And it's important that you continually grow and you learn, right? If you wanna earn more, you gotta learn more. So this is one way that you learn more. Uh, really successful people typically read one to two hours a day, which sounds crazy, it's amazing. I don't read one to two hours a day, but there are people that I know that read one to two hours a day. Even some of the busiest people in the world that are very successful read one to two hours a day. The average CEO reads between 50 and 100 books a year. So it's really important that you are someone who is consuming information that will grow your financial wealth, will grow your perspective. So the first thing, there's a few recommendations that I have. The first thing is called The Economist Magazine. It's a British magazine. It's great. It gives you basically a 30,000 foot view of what's happening really in the world economies as well as what's happening locally. They address different issues. Um, you can get it digitally on your phone. You can listen to it. It's also a print magazine. It's really good. It's a weekly that comes out. There's so much information. I can't even consume it all, but it's really, really valuable. I recommend that one. I don't take everything from any of these sources as being the only thing that I listen to or that it's just like perfect everything they're saying, but it will really help you a lot to learn, to learn new terms, to learn more about finance. So I recommend that one. And also there's tons of podcasts out there that you can listen to. There's podcasts that are, you know, about wealth, about real estate, about uh, inflation and, you know, other sort of macroeconomics. There's a lot of great ones out there. There's one that I actually just started. It's called Mailbox Money. Uh, it's the Mailbox Money show. You can see it actually on the same channel on YouTube, you can also check it out on iTunes as well. So we basically talk about different forms of passive investing, all different asset classes and ways that you can grow your wealth. So you can check that out. And then also there's some books. There's just tons of books. I do read quite a bit, but basically there's a top 10 or 12 books that I recommend that are really financial books that have really helped me to increase my financial IQ. 
that have helped me to grow my net worth by 10x over the last four years. I really recommend these books. I put a link down below in the, in the bio of this video so you can check it out. So go down there and check it out and you can click on it. It'll take you to a list of those books. So you can check that out. Uh, but I'd love to really know from you, uh, you know, what resources or books or podcasts or what things have been helpful for you to grow your financial IQ. And I'd really love for you to put a comment down below because it can help somebody else who's watching this to basically get a resource that could really help them as well. So this is how this community grows, right? As we help each other and there's this abundance mindset where, you know, if I help you or you help me, we we basically, we learn and we can make, you know, grow together. We can maybe even do a deal together in the future. So it's awesome. So stick that down below. If you made it this far, consider subscribing. We're gonna do more videos like this about personal finance, macroeconomics, inflation, uh, passive investing. It's gonna be great. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.